Snake. Your first objective is to make contact with our informants, Rat Patrol Team Zero One. Snake in Fortnite? Yep, he's here to find Metal Gear in the Fortnite world. This crossover isn't too far-fetched because Snake in a shooter feels right, mostly because Metal Gear Solid 5 had modern shooter controls and mechanics. Fortnite, however, I haven't played since 2017, and I had no idea what anything was or what the heck a battle pass was, which is what you're going to need for the Snake skin at 1000 V-Bucks, which is about 899. Come on now, you don't know your V-Bucks? Okay, so I bought the battle pass, where Snake? So apparently you have to complete some quests to obtain the skin, but it's my money and I want it now. Here's how to do that. In no particular order, the missions or achievements are the following. The first one is hiding in the box for 10 seconds, and you can buy one from Solid Snake himself on the island at the northern part of the map. I didn't even know about thanking the driver. Here you'll find Snake, and for 100 gold, you can buy a box, you throw it to use it, 10 seconds, and that's the first quest done. Next mission. One of the other uh, missions or quests is deal 250 damage to someone within 10 meters, deal 50 damage to enemies with explosives, deal 500 damage with a rifle, break two cameras or turrets, and four of these quests will unlock Snake. Finally, I can take down Metal Gear. Never mind. You can take it even a step further and also unlock Old Snake from Metal Gear Solid 4. Here, the missions on page 2 are hit enemies before they hit you. Hide in five different matches in the box, deal 2500 damage with a suppressor, use stealth camel three times, and help out in hacking three train chests or opening three vaults. Now you can play as Old Snake. Hold on, let me change the title of the video. There we go. Now I can use the glider, have the Metal Gear Mark II as your backpack, and instead of the pickaxe, you have Snake's Knife. Now I'm ready to play the events of Metal Gear Solid 4 out in Fortnite. Or, or not. Come on, go easy on Snake, he's old. Well, actually, he's only about 40-ish, but the rapid aging got to him, you know? You know how that be. Buying the Battle Pass showed me that there's so many characters that have appeared in Fortnite in the past, like Peter from Family Guy, Goku, and Vegeta. What else have I missed? Eh. Video game crossovers have always been around. In fact, this ain't Snake's first forte into crossovers. He's also been in Bomberman, and of course, Smash Brothers. But Bomberman is part of Konami, so is that a real crossover? Well, you see, basically you can categorize crossovers into two sections, first party, third party, or second party, in the sense that first party referring to appearances in a game that is either owned by the same companies or in the same universe, so to speak. For example, Smash Bros has a ton of characters, mostly from other Nintendo franchises. So that would be first party category like Pokemon and Mario and whatnot. But Snake himself isn't part of Nintendo and neither is Sonic, another character who has had crossovers with Nintendo like Mario and Sonic at the Olympics. Or what about the classic Capcom vs Marvel games? In terms of crossovers, the Capcom vs Marvel games are some of the most popular and fun fighting games. Others like Jump Force eh, weren't so good. They should have stuck with the format of the older titles instead. Or what about Link and Soul Calibur? That was a big deal back in the day. Soul Calibur had many guest characters. Remember Yoda was in it and Dark Vader? Ooh, what about NBA Street 3? On the GameCube version, there was Mario, Luigi, and Princess Peach. What about Hotel Mario? No, we don't, we don't talk about that. Are we headed towards more like real life people in video games like Keanu Reeves in Cyberpunk or Walking Dead guy using his likeness in Death Stranding? I know his name's Norman Reedus, so it was a joke. But I think that maybe games that are more live services are always going to have more guests just because they keep going on for longer years. And since most of them are free, they have to make big announcements and big add-ons to keep players interested in buying that seasonal pass. Sometimes crossovers don't have to be the actual characters themselves, but just items from another game. Continuing with that Metal Gear franchise and Metal Gear Solid 3 for the 3DS, you can find little Yoshi figures in the game that would replenish your health. In Rocket League, you could unlock Mario and Luigi accessories, Metroid 2 and Hot Wheels as well. And Rocket League is in Fortnite too, huh? Interesting, Fortnite really does have a lot of crossovers, just like Brawlhalla. The game has a long list of featured characters, even some from the WWE apparently, like John Cena, who was also in Fortnite? Okay, what about Fall Guys, hmm? Another live service? Sonic, Team Fortress 2? Okay, this one wins. Th it, this one wins from Fall Guys. Stop the video. This is the crossover winner. And it's also in Fortnite. Damn it. I guess they do have everything. Marvel, Star Wars, Naruto, 
Harry Kane. Harry Kane. Okay, this one. This one wins. Harry Kane wins. Maybe he'll win a trophy there. But who else was in the game? No. This can't be. What? How is this possible? I guess Fortnite does have the most crossovers of any video game. And it's been successful at bringing in new or old players into the game. Like me, with specific characters. I had to try out Snake in the game. Okay, there's only a few players left and I've been sneaking around on the box the whole game so I haven't killed anyone, but now is my chance. Just gotta aim and shoot. Well, if that's how you want to play, let's play. What? 